This is the BBC Home Service. Afternoon Theatre. We present Ruth Dunning as Elizabeth Peel and Hamilton Dice as William Chesney with Mary O'Farrell as Mrs. Chesney in Sweet Sorrow, a play by Ronald Barnes adapted for radio by Cynthia Pugh. Sweet Sorrow. The action of the play takes place in the home of Mr. William Chesney, somewhere in St. John's Wood, in the year 1890. Lucy! Lucy, quickly, she's coming! Miss Violet, such excitement! The carriage is halfway up the drive! Come and look! Come away from that window at once, Miss Violet. You know what your mother says. Oh, fool, I won't fool. The carriage is at the door. I wonder what she looks like. We will know soon enough, I expect. I couldn't see properly from the window. Run and fetch Mama, Lucy. Tell her Miss Peel has arrived. Mrs. Chesney will receive her in her own good time, I dare say. But it will look so rude if Mama isn't here. Now, Miss Violet, remember that Miss Peel is not a visitor in the ordinary sense. She's an employee of your father's and must be treated as such. Lucy, I do believe you're jealous. Nothing of the sort. Oh, I really don't see why you need a governess. I was always considered good enough before. Now, Lucy, don't be hurt, please. I will always love you much more than the new Miss Peel. <laughs> but you must admit, it is exciting having a, a real governess all to oneself. Well, I only hope it doesn't spoil you, that's all. Of course not. Oh, please, tell Mama to come. All right, my baby. And then bring Miss Peel in here. She will wait until she is sent for. Then I will come with you. Certainly not. You will remain here like the perfect young lady I brought you up to be. Oh, very well, Lucy. But just to please you, only hurry. Yes, Miss Violet. Good afternoon. You must be Miss Violet, my child. Yes, I am. You can call me Violet, though. Thank you. I'm sorry Mama isn't here to receive you, but she had a slight head after lunch and, and went to lie down. I see. I hope she will feel better soon. Oh, yes. They don't last long. Does Mrs. Chesney have them often? Yes, she does. I'm sorry. Um, won't you sit down? Thank you. No, not there. That's Father's chair. I see. I'll sit here on the sofa, though. No one sits in that chair but Papa. Is he very strict? About some things, yes. What, for instance? Well, punctuality, mostly. He hates meals to be late. That surely is understandable. I suppose it is. But I do so love to play in the garden. Will he not let you do that? Yes, but I cannot tell the time without a watch, can I? Oh, I see. And then... One day, he caught me reading in that chair. He was furious. Why? Just doesn't like it, I suppose. You're not afraid of him, are you? I think I am, sometimes. He can be so angry. You're making me quite frightened of him. Oh, he won't bother you. You will hardly see him except at meals. I do hope Mrs. Chesney will like me. Mama, of course she will. She likes everyone, and everyone likes her. I think she is the most perfect mother anyone could have. That is how it should be. Only, I do wish she were stronger. A headache is something ladies often have. Oh, it, it isn't just the headaches. She looks quite ill sometimes. If only Papa would take us abroad, I'm sure it would do her good. Perhaps he will one day. No, I don't think so. He doesn't want to go. How extraordinary. No, it isn't. He just loves his own home, that's all. Besides, Mama isn't strong enough at the moment. My dear child, I didn't mean to upset you. You haven't in the least. And I am not your child. I'm sorry. Oh, my dear Miss 
feel. How dreadful of me not to be here to welcome you. Not at all, Mrs. Chesney. I'm sorry to hear you're not well. Oh, it's nothing, really. Just a slight headache. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I see that you've met my daughter already. Yes, indeed. She's been entertaining me most charmingly. <laughs> oh, that's my love. Violet, run and ask Lucy to bring the tea in now. Miss Peel and I have one or two things to discuss. I know. My future. I shall watch out for Papa. Be careful not to overdo your welcome. You know how tired he is at the end of the day. Yes, Mama. Will you excuse me, Miss Peel? Certainly, my dear. <laughs> She's a dear child, but quite a handful at times. She will not seem so to me, Mrs. Chesney. I hope not. My references were quite acceptable, I gather. Yes, of course. Did you expect us to require more? I wasn't sure. As you know, I've never done work like this before. That's why we chose you. You're very kind. Not at all. The loss of your father must have been a great blow to you. Oh, here's tea. Put it down here, Lucy. Yes, ma'am. I expect tea will be welcome to you, Miss Peel, after your journey. It is indeed. Thank you, Lucy. That's all. Very good, ma'am. I always feel that tea is a great inducement to friendship. Sugar or milk? No sugar, thank you. It's very odd, Mrs. Chesney. But already I feel at home and happy here, happier than i felt for years. I'm so glad. Your tea. Thank you. As I was saying, you've just suffered a severe loss. Indeed, yes. It is only a month ago that my dear father passed away. Oh. As I explained to you in my letter, he was the vicar only of a very small parish, but greatly beloved by everybody. It came as a great shock to us all. It must have done. My mother had died many years before, and I did my best to take her place. When he was gone, I had nothing. I had to find employment somewhere. When I read your advertisement, it, it appeared ideal, so I wrote immediately. Lady French, who lives in the parish, was good enough to give me references, and so here I am. I cannot express my gratitude to you strongly enough. There's no need, my dear. You, you see, we didn't want a professional governess because I, for one, would be intimidated by her. I'm not particularly strong, and I need a companion. I see. Well, you seem distressed. Is anything wrong, Miss Peel? It is nothing. I realize now why you chose me instead of a professional, as you call it. I didn't mean to offend you by saying that. I... I, I, I thought it would make you feel more at home. Oh, of course it has. How, how stupid I am sometimes. I feel sure I will be very much at home. Splendid. I expect it'll take a little time to accustom yourself to your new surroundings. But you needn't start your duties with Violet until tomorrow. But I would like to begin immediately. After she's had her tea, if possible. Very well, my dear. But she must not have too much excitement before bedtime. Is she highly strong? Enough? I didn't mean that. <laughs> but it isn't every day a governess arrives. What education has she had? She's very intelligent, but she requires more knowledge of history and art. And I particularly wish her to learn French and Italian. Uh, you are proficient in those languages, are you not? I pride myself especially on that. I spent many years in France. Oh, how did your dear father spare you for so long? I was sent to a convent there as a child. It's amazing how quickly one picks up a language at that age, is it not? How fortunate you were. I've never been abroad. Really? Unfortunately, my husband has never been able to spare the time to take me. Still, we hope to go one day. I'm sure you would love it. So am I. Gracious me, look at the time. I'll ring for Lucy to show you your room. Mr. Chesney will be home shortly, and we like to be free for a quiet hour before dinner. Of course. I've enjoyed our tete-a-tete -tete so much. <laughs> there, you see, I know a little friend. Indeed, you do. Oh, Lucy, show Miss Peel to her room, will you? Yes, ma'am. Au revoir, Madame Chesney. Je reviens, please. Au revoir, Miss M Mademoiselle Peel. Au revoir. This way, Miss. Oh, I beg pardon, Miss Violet. I didn't see you. That's all right, Lucy. Well, Mama, is she satisfactory? Well, that is not for you to ask. But she is most satisfactory. <laughs> have you finished tea? Is that all you have to say? I thought you'd be much more excited. I'm hungry, Mama. Excitement always makes me hungry. What a terrible child you are. Miss Peel will have a lot of work with you, I can see. 
French and Italian. French and Italian. Oh, no, how wonderful. I'll work terribly hard. I promise you will be proud of me. <laughs> hooray, hooray, hooray! Violet, what do you mean by making such a noise? <coughs> you know your mother has a headache. She didn't mean any harm, William. I was only pleased, Papa. The new governess has just arrived. Then we must show her what a well-behaved family we are, mustn't we? Yes, Papa. We must not give her the impression that we are not used to such luxuries. I'm sure it wouldn't matter in her case, dear. She seems so friendly. Friendly? Well, like one of us. Then she must realize her place. She will, Papa. <laughs> She's just gone to look at it now. Violet, leave the room. But, Papa... Please do as I say. Yes, Papa. William, do you have to be so stern with her? If Violet is to turn into a young lady, she must learn that a child has to keep her place. I will leave it to you to see Miss Peel keeps hers. Yes, William. Um, uh, what is her place exactly? Her place is that of a servant with certain advantages. She is allowed to eat with us and will be treated not with respect, but a certain reserve. Yes, William. Here's your tea. Ah, thank you. Ah, this is a great day for me, my dear. For years I have worked assiduously for other people. But this afternoon I was elected chairman of the board. How wonderful, William. Ah, you must see what a tremendous difference that will make to us. Uh, do you mean financially? In several ways, my dear. Of course, it is not certain. But nearly all my predecessors have been granted a knighthood. And this is what we must work for now. A knighthood? Oh, dear. Dear. Yes, I hope by the time Violet is of age, we will be able to launch her successfully and give her a London season. We uh, might even have her presented. Presented? At oh. court. Oh. oh. Yes, my dear, we have come a long way since our early days, and I intend to make the most of it. But we must begin as we mean to go on, and Miss Peel is the first of many changes I hope will take place. I know that in the past you have been on... Uh, familiar. One might even say uh, friendly terms with Lucy and Cook. But you must learn to curb these indiscretions. It makes life so much easier to be on good terms with everyone. Life is not meant to be easy, but a challenge. A battle of the strong and weak. And we will not be the weak, my dear. Now, will you be so good as to ask Miss Peel to come in? I would like to ask her a few questions. But I've just done that. And what did you ask? About the French and Italian, mainly. She seems so nice. I hope she'll be able to teach me in her spare time. Surely she will assume you know those languages. Oh, but I told her I didn't. You told her you didn't? And she quite understood. I shall be able to learn with Violet. <sighs> what else did you learn today? From her? Oh, she was telling me about her poor father. He's dead, you know. I know. Such a sad tale. She really is most grateful. I think we've picked up a real bargain with her. Nevertheless, I would like to ascertain for myself... Uh, you rang, sir? Yes, Lucy. You may take the tray now. Yes, sir. And ask Miss Peel to step in here, will you please? Yes, sir. What sort of questions will you ask her, dear? Leave that to me. You won't tire her, will you? She's had such an exhausting journey. Mm, she must surely expect an interview with her employer on her arrival. But she's already had one with me. That is hardly the same. By the way... You must not mention my possible knighthood to anyone, or it might jeopardize my chances. Oh, of course not, William. I won't breathe a word. I uh, think we will dress for dinner tonight. Just as you say, William. You sent for me, Mr. Chesney? No, Miss Peel. I sent for you. Uh, this is my husband, Miss Peel. How do you do? Please sit down, Miss Peel. Thank you. <clears throat> is it not time for you to dress for dinner, my dear? Oh. It's a little early, William. Nevertheless, you might arrange with Cook to bring dinner an hour forward. I have to go out again. Very well, dear. Uh, will you excuse me, Miss Peel? Certainly, Mrs. Desmond. <clears throat> My wife was telling me about your late father's sudden death. Yes. It was a great shock to me. It must have been. Tell me, Miss Peel, where were you educated? You never mentioned it in your letter. How very remiss of me. I was brought up very quietly in a convent in France. My father wished me to learn the language. Indeed. For any particular reason? He thought it would stand me in good stead in later life. 
as indeed it has. If your father was vicar of a small parish, is it not odd that he had you brought up in Catholic surroundings? My father had no particular enmity towards Catholicism. And, of course, the Roman Catholic religion is not compulsory in a convent. Not uh, compulsory, but usual, surely. I suppose it is. Even more so in France, I imagine. Mr. Chesney, do you disbelieve my statement? I always believe the word of a lady. Thank you. Was Italian taught at your school as well? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, I learned that chiefly through textbooks. But my music master in the village was Italian, so naturally I learned the accent with him. Of course. I presume this was when you returned from abroad. Oh, yes. I came home when I was nearly 15. My father needed me in the parish. What did you do to help him? I helped him to entertain his parishioners and to organize the church bazaars and fates. At 15? That was a very early age to start. Naturally, I didn't begin at once, but gradually I took on those duties. And you remained there until his death? Yes. I see. Well, Miss Peel, you will find life very different here. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. There will be no organizing for you to do, except, of course, for Violet. You will be spending most of your time with her. Of course. I will endeavor to be satisfactory in my work with her. Good. I think that is all, Miss Peel. You will start your duties in the morning. There's just one thing. Yes? Would you please tell me when I have my leisure hours and if I am needed on Sundays? Your evenings will be your own, Miss Peel, if you wish to spend them in your room. Thank you. And Sunday? We go to church in the morning and in the evening, where I'm sure you will wish to join us. Of course. It will be lovely to go with the family once more. I think that is all for the present. No doubt you will wish to change for dinner. I must ask you to excuse me tonight, Mr. Chesney. My, my trunk is not yet unpacked. I will have to dine as I am. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, then we will all dine as we are. Oh, please do not upset your plans on my account. I, I can have a tray in my room. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Perhaps, um... That would be best. Oh, Mr. Chesney. Yes, Miss Peel? You have questioned me minutely on matters which are of no great importance. No doubt you have your reasons for this, but if you find me in any way unsuitable, it would be best to say so now. My dear Miss Peel, I have no doubt as to your abilities for your work. And if I was too inquisitive about your past, I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Chesney. You have made me very proud. Proud? In what way? Only a great man can apologize to an employee. And you are such a man. You flatter me, Miss Peel. Nonetheless, it is true. You know, on my way here, I wondered so much what you would be like. Indeed. May I ask what opinion have you formed of me so far? That you are a, a man of the world, intent on making its way to the top of his particular profession, cold on the surface, but warm-hearted for all that. And may I say so, a man much misunderstood. How? You are doing your utmost to win a battle, a battle between the strong and the weak, and you do not intend to lose. You have an uncanny insight into people's characters, Miss Peel. Perhaps. Or maybe it is just a mutual sympathy with those who are like myself. Like yourself? Surely you would not say uh, we were similar in character? More than you know. I understand you, Mr. Chesney, and I hope you will find in me an able helper and a loyal friend in your future plans. Thank you, Miss Peel. You are most kind. But my uh, plans, as you call them, do not include you. I did not imagine they did. But I hope you will find me as understanding of your shortcomings as you are of mine. Excuse me, William. I gave Cook your message and dinner will be ready in half an hour. Thank you, my dear. If you will excuse me, I will start to unpack. Uh, one moment, Miss Peel. What did you mean by that impertinent remark? It does not matter, Mrs. Chesney. Indeed, it does. Am I intruding? No, no, my oh, dear, no, no. Of course not, Mrs. Chesney. I was merely trying to clarify my decisions. Excuse me. What did she say, dear? She was being a little too familiar. How strange. She seemed so reserved. Um, uh, William, mm. she and I were speaking of France before you came in. Really? She said I'd love it. Do you think we could take a holiday there soon? I'm afraid not, my dear. There will be so much more work for me to do now. It'll be out of the question for me to leave the country. Oh, you used to go so often. I did envy you your trips there. It was hardly possible for you to accompany me then with our child on the way. But it, it is possible now. Oh, William, I do so want to travel. I am sorry, my dear, but it cannot be arranged. 
My new position will benefit all of us considerably. It is only natural that we shall have to give up pleasure trips in order to gain other things of more lasting value. I see. William, are you sure you want all this? All this? This new position and all it means. I like to live simply, you know. And I'm beginning to wonder if I shall be able to keep up with you. Of course you can. You'll have to for my sake as well as Violet's. You want her to do well, don't you? I want her to be happy, William. She will be happier if she marries into money. And if I make enough to raise our standards of living. We were happy without money at one time. Oh, I don't know. It'll all be so strange. I almost wish we were still poor. Now, now, there is no need to cry, my dear. No need at all. I wish you could understand how I feel, William. I understand very well. Listen. You had better have dinner in your room. You can't appear looking like that. I'll be all right in a minute. Please do as I say, my dear. I will tell everyone your headache has returned. But, William... Please go to your room now. I shall be up almost immediately. Oh, very well, William. I'm sorry, dear. Mama, Cook says they are dressing for dinner. Does that mean I can wear my new party frock? What? Oh, oh yes, wear what you like. Oh, thank you, Mama. Your mother and Miss Peel will be dining upstairs, so uh, we shall be by ourselves. Is there anything wrong? Of course there is nothing wrong. Your mother's headache is worse, that's all. I call that very wrong. Don't be rude, child. I'm sorry, Papa. Can I go to Mama now, please? No, you may not. Then I'll go and help Miss Peel to unpack. You will do nothing of the sort. Can't you stay still for just one moment and read something? Yes, Papa. What shall I read, Papa? Good heavens, child, have you no initiative? Choose one from your shelf in the bookcase. Yes, Papa. And try to be a little quieter. Yes, Papa. Oh, if you please, sir. Now what is it, Lucy? Cook says dinner is held up because the fire's gone out. Oh, are you completely incompetent below stairs? Why is the fire out? Well, sir, with all the excitement, she quite forgot to stoke up. What excitement? Dinner being put forward and the governess arriving. You know, sir. Oh, she's very sorry, sir. Oh, well, if the fire is out, she had better relight it at once. You'd better go down and help her with it. Yes, sir. Oh, but Mrs. Chesney's bell's ringing, sir. Oh, very well. I will go to her. Violet, see that you keep out of mischief. Yes, sir. Why, why, no. Fair child family. Nine upon nine. Oh, I wish I had something new to read. Oh, Miss Peel, have you finished your unpacking? Not yet. I thought I'd bring you these books to show you. They are your French and Italian grammar. Oh, do let me see. I think we'd better start on the French first. Here it is. Goodness. This is quite an old book. Look at all the marks in it. Yes. It was a book I used when I first learned French. Really? I was younger than you. And a very frightened little girl in a strange country. Strange country? Yes. I was sent to a convent in France for my schooling. Away from my family. What a shame. Thank goodness you won't know what it is to be lonely, Violet. It's a terrible thing, loneliness. But you have a mother and a father who love you very much. And now I have you as well. Yes, indeed. That is something I've always wanted. A little girl of my own. Well, in a way, my wish has been granted. Even if you're not really mine, it will seem so to me. Dear Miss Peel, I will try to be a credit to you. Oh, Papa, how is Mama? A little better, I think. She may come down to dinner after all. Did her headache come back? It did, as a matter of fact. Uh, excitement, I think. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Violet, if you wish to appear at dinner, it would be advisable if you change <coughs> now. Yes, Papa. I'm going to wear my party dress, Miss Peel. Isn't that a special treat? It is indeed, Violet. Excuse me, Papa. See you at dinner, Miss Peel. What a lovely child she is. A trifle impulsive. <clears throat> Miss Peel. I fear I have an unpleasant task before me. Unpleasant? Nothing to do with me, I hope. Indeed, it is to do with you. You have only been in my house for a short time, 
And yet you have already upset my wife. How? You have been filling her head with ideas of traveling abroad. I merely meant... If you wish to remain here, I would advise you to attend to your own duties and leave me to manage the affairs of the family. How ridiculous. I beg your pardon. I said, how ridiculous. Why should the mere mention of France throw you into such a pet? You are impertinent, Miss Peel. I really don't And while we are on the subject, what did you mean by your remark before we were interrupted? What remark? I feel sure you know without my reminding you. When we are alone, your whole attitude alters from deference to downright familiarity. Oh, come now, Mr. Chesney. You are imagining things. Familiarity with you would be impossible on a first meeting. I'm sure I'm much obliged to you. But then I have a feeling we've met before. I don't think so. I feel sure I would remember it. Thank you. But one alters a lot with the years, and a child becomes unrecognizable sometimes when she grows into a woman. What do you mean? I mean, Mr. Chesney, we met when I was only a girl of 16. At Doville. Doville? 14 years ago, to be precise. Impossible. You were in your late 20s then, and very much the smart young man. I don't know what you're talking about. Then I will remind you. Forgive me for bringing this up so early in our acquaintance, but you have rather forced my hand. Perhaps you'd better sit down, Mr. Chesney. Your memory might give you a nasty jolt. <sighs> That's right. As I was saying, I was only a young girl at the time, but old enough to realize what was happening to my mother. You told us she died when you were very young. I was very young, Mr. Chesney. But what you did to my mother made me grow up very rapidly. What I did? My mother was your mistress, and you let her to believe you were unmarried. Did you know she died in childbirth? But of course you did. You were the child's father. No. I fear I must disagree. There are, in my possession, several letters showing clearly that you knew what you were about. From your beloved William, I think most of them are signed. Stop this at once, Julia. In my own good time. I realize that you're not entirely to blame. One cannot help falling in love, and my mother had the misfortune to love you. Nonetheless, Mr. Chesney, I think you will agree that you ought to make some sort of reparation to me as your stepdaughter. You? My stepdaughter? Well, I am practically that, am I not? In all but the eyes of the church. And if your son had lived, I would have been his stepsister. I've often wondered how you would have handled that situation. I loved your mother dearly. I'm glad to hear that. All the same, it's strange that your love did not prevent you from deserting her when she needed you most. Well, I had to return to England to my family. How sad. And you gave no thought to me. Well, you were at school. I did not see you often. You will see me a great deal in the future. Is it money you want? Not so fast, Mr. Chesney. I cannot be bought off as easily as that. What do you want, then? Only one thing. To help you. Help me? After all, everybody makes mistakes, and I freely forgive you yours. Thank you. But I shall not forget. You may need reminding from time to time. Now, what I need is security. The security of a home life. Such as yours, Mr. Chesney. I cannot allow you to stay here under my roof. I'm afraid you have little choice in the matter. You engage me and found me satisfactory, so here I stay. Dinner is served, sir. Thank you, Lucy. You may go. Beg pardon, miss. Go along, Lucy. If you say so, sir. As you have left it so late, you had better go straight down without changing. Your family is expecting you. Down here. I wanted to see Mama and Miss Peel dressed up. They'd gone when I returned from my party, and Papa did promise. He didn't mean it this time of night. Why, it's nearly 12 o'clock, so straight back to bed you go. I want to see Father Christmas. And you won't see him unless you're in bed. The master would discharge me instantly if he caught you down here. So go upstairs. Please, Miss Violet. Very well. Let me get warm first. Oh, dear. I'll get my notice. I know it. No, you won't. We'll hear the front door bang. And I won't tell Papa. Oh, you are a wee bism when you want to be, and no mistake. Oh, Pooh. Tell me how Mama looked. Oh, 
lovely Miss Violet. And what about Miss Peel? Hmm. Overdressed, in my opinion. Her father dead such a short time. Seems quite wrong for her to go out in such a low-cut gown. Fast, I call it. Lucy, I believe you're jealous of Miss Peel. No, I am not. But if you ask me, she puts on far too many airs and graces. Sometimes you'd think she was the lady of the house. You mustn't be so unkind, Lucy. She must be feeling very sad about her father. Mm, and it's a pity she doesn't show it more. The way she looks at me sometimes gives me the creeps. Oh, Lucy, please don't say such things. She's very kind to me. Oh. I hate to think you don't like her. Now, oh, don't you fret, Miss Violet. I dare say we'll all settle down into our rightful places sooner or later. Oh, dear. Here they are. Now hurry, Miss Violet. <laughs> all right, I'm going. But I don't promise to sleep. Oh, oh, goodness, what a night. Oh, I don't believe it is going to snow. Violet will be pleased. Good evening, Mum. And good evening, sir. Ah. Well, how did you have a nice time? Uh, yes, thank you, Lucy. Most enjoyable. Such interesting people, but mm. very tiring. Would you like to go straight to bed, Mrs. Chesney? I could bring some hot chocolate to your room. It would be no trouble at all, Mum. Thank you. How kind you all are to me. But I have Violet's Christmas stocking to be prepared. Shall I help you with it? No, thank you, my dear. This is one thing I really enjoy doing myself. I shall get thoroughly warm by this lovely fire before making a start. Yes, ma'am. I've brought you your whiskey, sir. Oh, thank you, Lucy. Ah, will that be all, sir? Uh, do you wish anything, Miss Peel? Not at the moment, thank you. Ah, yes, Lucy, you may go to bed. You will have a long day tomorrow. Yes. Thank you, sir. Good night, ma'am. Good night, Lucy. Good night, Lucy. Good night, Miss Peel. I have a feeling Lucy does not like me. Mm, nonsense, Miss Peel. Why shouldn't she? I expect she's overtired, that's all. Don't you agree, William? Mm. Oh, yes, yes, my dear, quite probably. Oh, my feet are quite sore with all that dancing. I, I think I'll take off my shoes. In the drawing room, my dear? Well, we're alone, William, in our own home. Surely I can relax here. Of course you can, my dear. Let me help you. Oh, thank you, Miss Peel. <laughs> you are a comfort. Did you enjoy the party? Very much, Mrs. Sesson. She was quite the belle, wasn't she, William? Oh, yes, my dear. Do tell me, where did you get that charming dress? It was a present. A present? Yes. From someone very close to me. How exciting. Do tell us, Miss Peel. Have you an admirer? Not exactly an admirer, Mrs. Chesney. Oh, we mustn't be inquisitive, my dear. Oh, I didn't mean to pry. Please don't think that, Miss Peel. But you look so lovely tonight. You were quite a sensation with the gentleman. Oh, really, my dear. It is so invigorating to meet new people, is it not? I'm so grateful to you and Mr. Chesney for including me in your Christmas plans. Well, we couldn't have you spending the festive season alone. It was most thoughtful of you. Christmas is such a family affair, I always think. It must be wonderful to be able to return to one's own fireside and talk of everything one has done during the day. I quite agree. But my husband hardly ever talks to me. Nonsense, my dear. You don't, William. Never about your actual work. Well, I did not think you were particularly interested. Of course I am. But you always seem so secretive, I don't like to ask. Do tell me about it, William. Not now, my dear. Yes, now. It's as good a time as any. Tell us about your wonderful plans for the future. Oh, my dear, I'm sure Miss Peel would be bored with such things. On the contrary, I would be most interested. Well, there's very little to tell. And certainly nothing to be secretive about. I work in an office six days a week. And as our company invests on the market, I manage to pick up a few tips now and then and gamble on the exchange myself. Stocks and shares? Yes, my dear. Well, go on. That is all. But what about your knighthood? Knighthood? I asked you particularly not to speak of that. Oh, it doesn't matter with Miss Peel. She's part of the family now. Do tell me about this knighthood of yours, Mr. Chesney. Nothing is settled. It is merely a hope for the future, no more. Well, at least tell Miss Peel of your plan. I hardly feel it is any affair of Miss Peel. What I, I think that Mrs. Chesney means is how they will affect Violet. That is why she thinks I would be interested. I have no idea at the moment. But William... I would don't... rather not discuss it now, if you please, my dear. Oh, very well, William. It is nearly midnight. Oh, as late as that. Oh, and Violet's stocking isn't ready yet. Oh, I must go and see to it at once. Will, uh, will you be long, William? No, no, my dear. I shall just finish my whiskey first. Very well, dear. Good night, Miss Peel. It will be Christmas when next we meet. 
I do hope you like your present. I'm sure I shall, dear Mrs. Chesney. I'm afraid mine isn't much, but it's the best I could do. Oh, you shouldn't have troubled. Good night. Or rather, bonsoir. Bonsoir, madame. What a sweet woman she is. You are a fortunate man, Mr. Tiersney. Thank you. Of course, she is entirely unsophisticated. But you can't have everything, can you? What do you mean? This evening, for instance, we met some quite influential people. If she had used some intelligence, she would have seen to it that you would have met them again. I really don't see how. There are ways and means, especially for a woman. She could employ subtleties a man wouldn't know existed and so gain admittance through any door. All women are not like you, Miss Peel. In regard to my wife, she does all in her power to help me. Which is not nearly enough. Married to you all these years, and she knows nothing of your business affairs. Which is not a woman's place to. If a woman is to help her husband, she must know everything. No one can go through life alone, and that is your big mistake. You believe you can. I need no help from you, Miss Peel. What fools men are. I beg your pardon. Can't you see that if you are to make anything of yourself, you must break away? From my family? You broke away once before, remember, but you had not the courage to go through with it. If you are referring to that episode in France, I was already married and I had no intention of breaking episode away. Episode? Ruining my mother's life. And now you are trying to ruin mine, but it won't work. Indeed. You talk very glibly about my past and future. Take a look at your own. Oh, I admit you have a hold on me at the moment, but don't imagine it will last... You certainly have had a past, Miss Peel. But believe me, you have no future. None at all. What do you mean? I mean, quite simply, that I shall dispose of you. <laughs> you don't be so melodramatic. If you're threatening to murder me, you wouldn't have the courage. You ran away from my mother when she was in need, and you would certainly run away from a far more dangerous undertaking. A man can change a great deal during his lifetime. But not you. You live in a world of deceit, and deceit breeds cowardice, so don't try to frighten me. While I have those love letters, you wouldn't dare touch me. You know, you are an extraordinary woman. If I were not directly concerned with your mischief, I would admire you in a way. Tell me... Why did you wait so long for your revenge? I wasn't greatly concerned with you. I had my own life to live. And then, quite suddenly, I lost everything. My husband. Your oh, husband? Yes, I was married. He died, leaving me nothing. He was a gay, charming creature, but an adventurer and a complete spendthrift. After his death, I had to start afresh. And I decided to return to England. Your name was in the paper several times in relation to business deals. Once, there was even a photograph of At some club dinner, I think it was. I realized who you were and thought of contacting you. But I had hopes of better things. Several months later, I chanced upon your advertisement and decided it was time to act. I made up a sad story about a fictitious vicar being my father. Gave an address of an old acquaintance of mine and, oddly enough, you engaged me without even verifying my references. Oddly enough. Do you know, your true story moves me far more than the one about the vicar. Does it? For the first time, I would like to say I'm sorry about your mother. Deeply sorry. I can almost believe that. Please do. And now that we know each other better, let us try to be friends. That is what I have wanted all the time. You have many of your mother's qualities. There was a moment when you were speaking of your husband when you could have been Ellen. Ellen. How strange to hear her name again. What a lovely woman she was. She gave me such strength and comfort. It didn't matter to her what kind of upbringing I had had. She was the only person to whom I ever confided that I had been living a lie all those years. What do you mean? I used to pretend my family were well-connected. My wife would have been unutterably shocked if she had known the truth. What was the truth? Does it matter? The struggles and the fight for existence I had when I was a boy are over now. I wanted to be somebody. Ellen knew all that and understood. I hurt her deeply when I left her. Midnight. 
A Merry Christmas, Mr. Chesney, and a prosperous New Year. Merry Christmas, Elizabeth, and a Happy New Year. Well, I... It is my turn to be sorry now. Sorry? What for? For thrusting myself into your life, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know what I feel at the moment. This wasn't my plan. Plans have a habit of going wrong. Yes, they have, haven't they? Please, William, let me go. I need you, Elizabeth. We're oh, being foolish. Your wife... Can we not forget her for a few moments? All these years I brought in Christmas with a wife I do not care about. Please, Elizabeth, let this Christmas be a little different. Merry Christmas. I thought <coughs> I'd been New York friends. Wait, Miss Peel, what's happening? Oh, no, no, my dear, there's nothing to get excited about. You were kissing. Uh, we were uh, wishing each other a Merry Christmas, that's all. I don't believe it. William, you wouldn't have, oh, Don't, William. don't, my dear, you mustn't work yourself up. I'm not, William, really, I'm not working myself, working myself up. Violet is asleep, William. Will you take her presents? Yes, my dear, certainly. Oh, and these are for you, Miss Peel. William, yours. <laughs> I saw you. Oh, I saw you. I saw you. feeling too well. Oh, poor Mama. My head is going round and round as if it would burst. Poor Mama. Oh. Come and look at my lovely presents. That'll make you better. You showed them to me earlier, dear. They're lovely. You, you haven't thanked me yet for mine. Didn't you like it? The handkerchief? Of course I did, darling. It's beautiful. You don't seem very pleased. I spent nearly a shilling on the silks. And hours getting my flowers right. It was charmingly done. Father Christmas was very clever to remember my new paint box. Now I can copy the pictures in this book that Miss Peel gave me. Do look, Mama, it has lovely views of France. I don't want to see it. Why not, Mama? I don't feel like reading. But you don't have to read, Mama. Just look at the pictures. Please, will you stop it? Sorry, Mama. I didn't mean to upset you. That's all right, dear. I'm afraid I slept badly last night. Can I get you anything? I was looking for my smelling sorts. I thought I left them down here. I haven't seen them, Mama. Well, then I'd better search upstairs again. Oh, there you are. My dear, I've been looking for you. Have you, William? This is not time you were dressing for church. It's ten o'clock. I'm not going. Not going? But, Mama, it's Christmas Day. I'm sorry, but I don't feel up to it. No doubt you and Miss Peel will manage very well without me. Please, my dear, think what you are saying. I've been thinking all night, William, and I don't feel any better for it. All the time I can see you two again. A bonnet. Uh, go and put your bonnet on and wait downstairs. There's a good girl. All right. But what is Mama worried about, Papa? Oh, nothing, my dear. There's nothing wrong. Please do as I say. Yes, Papa. Oh, Miss Peel, thank you so much for your lovely presents. I'm going to copy all the pictures of my new paper. Violet, run along now. Very well, Papa. Good morning, Mrs. Chesney. Good morning. How can you address me so calmly after last night? Mrs. Chesney, please try to be reasonable. There was absolutely nothing wrong. I trusted you implicitly, Miss Peel, and you have abused that trust. Nonsense, of course she hasn't. William, will you please go? You'll only upset me more by staying here. Very well, my dear. If that is your wish... But I am deeply hurt, deeply hurt, at your lack of trust in your husband. <laughs> How pompous he can be sometimes. I beg your pardon. Pompous, inconsiderate and selfish. I try to bear with his faults, but there are moments when I lose all patience. I had no idea you felt like this. I had no idea you were in love with my husband. I'm not in love. Nonsense. It's written all over your face. I'm sorry that our friendship has to end so soon. 
but obviously you cannot stay here any longer. Mr. Chesney, you cannot mean that. You surely don't imagine that I could tolerate you under my roof another moment. Perhaps when you are a little calmer. I am as calm as I can be in your presence, Miss Peel. I would advise you to be careful what you say, Mrs. Chesney. Why? Neither of you has taken much care to avoid hurting my feelings. There are more important things than your feelings at stake. <laughs> now you're being mysterious, Miss Peel. I assure you there's no need. My husband will soon forget you when he's surrounded by the proper love of his family. Proper love? That sounds wonderfully upright and moral, but hardly in keeping with his character. You dare to question his character? He's a fine man, misled by a common adventurer. <gasps> You will regret that word, Mrs. Chesney. Are you trying to threaten me? No, I wouldn't waste my time. I'm sorry to do this, but you brought it on yourself. Your husband, Mrs. Chesney, knew my mother very well. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I might say he knew her intimately. Do you remember his trips abroad some years ago? He went to France, sometimes on business. Did you know my mother was his mistress and died in childbirth because of him? Please, please. Pack your things and leave. You don't believe me? Then ask your husband. He will tell you that I speak the truth. He wouldn't. Oh. Listen. All the time you were carrying Violet, he was in France with my mother. Lies. All lies. I refuse to listen. Once this interview is over, I shall never mention the subject again. Unless it is necessary. But you see how useless it would be to try and get rid of me. What do you mean? If I leave this house, I shall make public all that I know about your husband, Mrs. Chesney. I'm sure you realize that that will put an end to his career and all his hopes. You wouldn't dare. No. I have nothing to lose by such an action and everything to gain. The sympathy of the British press, for instance, for the daughter of an unfortunate woman. A few minutes ago, I ordered you out of the house. That order still stands. You're being very foolish, Mrs. Chesney. I don't think so, Miss Peel. You underestimate me and my love for my husband. If what you say is true, I shall stand by him. Perhaps Mr. Chesney has other views. He will see reason soon enough. Well, my dear, I hope the matter is cleared up satisfactorily. Perfectly, William. Miss Peel has been good enough to tell me of your sordid intrigue in France. She told you? So it is true. But we will speak of that later. The important thing is to get her out of this house. Has she not told you what she will do? Mrs. Chesney is under the impression that your salvation is of more importance than your career. Oh, but this is absurd. You cannot leave now. Why can't she? We must have time to think this over. Thinking will make it no better. It's hard enough for me to forgive you without harboring a constant reminder of your sins. My dear, I'm sorry, but what you ask is impossible. Thank you, William. Remember what I've said, William. Whatever you decide... Remember that I am your wife. I'm bound to you by vows too sacred to be broken by any action she can take. Goodbye, Miss Peel. I hope I shall never see you again. Why did you tell her? She insulted me and I lost my temper. Oh, I'm sorry, William. I should have been more careful, but it is done now. Yes. It is done. She dismissed me peremptorily, putting all the blame on me. I suppose that was natural enough in the circumstances. Please, Papa. Yes, Violet, what is it? Please, Papa, I'm ready now. We should be late for church if we don't hurry. Uh, you had uh, better go alone. Why, Oh, uh, yes, my dear. Mama has a very bad head, and we are staying behind to look after her. Can I not stay, too? Uh, no, it would be better if you went and joined your friends. After all, uh, it is Christmas, and they would be disappointed if you didn't. Very well. Goodbye, Miss Peel. I'm sorry you will miss the special service today. So am I, my dear. But there'll be lots of other Christmases. Yes, so there will. Goodbye, Papa. You must go upstairs and explain. It will be no use. She must see reason. She won't. She can be so obstinate at times there's no appeasing her. I can hardly blame her, I suppose. You'll have to cancel your luncheon party. How can I? We have gone to her mother's for years. She will be extremely worried if we don't appear. You must send Lucy with a note saying you have been taken ill suddenly. But I... It's the only way. Mothers have a habit of worrying over their own, but they're not so fussy about their in-laws. Very efficient, aren't you, Elizabeth? Someone has to keep a clear head. My dear, that is hardly fair. Oh, I'm sorry, William. 
Things have happened so quickly in the last 24 hours. I can't think straight. Forgive me. Of course. Now, don't worry, Elizabeth. Everything will be all right. I'll be better in a minute. I have a cold, horrid feeling just now. It, it made me shudder. My poor Elizabeth. William, I'm afraid. Of what? My wife cannot hurt us. I love you, my dear. When you hold me like this, I believe you. And yet, what are we going to do? I want to marry you, Elizabeth. Don't say that. You know it is impossible. Is it impossible? You know it is. Your wife will never let you go. If she were out of the way, would you marry me? You know I would. Well, then, we can dispose of her between us. Dispose of her? Yes. You can't mean what I think you mean. I mean what I say, Elizabeth. My life with her is hopeless. You said so yourself last night, and it's true. It is you that I need, Elizabeth. And I need you desperately. But I, I couldn't kill. Not even for you. Don't think of it as killing. In fact, it would be doing her a kindness. She is a sick woman. You have seen that. She might go on for years with headaches and pains at the slightest thing. I cannot stand it much longer. You must help me. What is your plan? I lay awake all night working it out. It's very simple. An overdose of her sleeping draught. This headache of hers is a godsend. How do you mean? We will persuade her to take a dose now, so as to be better by luncheon time. And then? As soon as she's unconscious, we will shut the windows and turn on the gas. The doctor will suspect? He will suspect her heart. When she is gone, we will open the windows and rid the room of the smell. The sleeping draught will only be strong enough to make her unconscious quickly. When do we do this? The sooner the better. No. Oh, no, I couldn't. I, I must have time to think. If you hesitate now, you will never work yourself up to it again. This is an ideal time. Everybody is out. What about Lucy? I'm sending her to Mrs. Bradford's with a note about my illness, remember? And Cook? Cook is down in the kitchen, concentrating on luncheon. How long will Lucy be gone? At least 20 minutes. It will be over by then. That note. Be careful what you say. If Mrs. Bradford let it out that you were supposed to be ill instead of your wife, they would be suspicious. How clever of you to think of that. I will say we are delayed and we'll be there an hour later. What is my part in this business? While I am writing the note, go to my wife and apologize. Apologize? Say that you are sorry for those dreadful threats you made and that you've come to a financial arrangement with me to hold your peace. Something to that effect anyway. But don't lay it on too thickly, or she might suspect a too sudden change of front. I understand. Tell her I will be up in a few minutes to sit with her. While she rests, pour out the sleeping draught yourself and give it to her with some water. She usually takes one teaspoonful, so double it. It's tasteless, I understand, so she will not notice any difference. And then? You come back here and keep watch for Lucy. Oh, William, hold me close. There. There, my dear. It is I who will be doing the deed, not you. I love you, Elizabeth. Think of our love when you are with her. Are you ready? Yes, William. Then go before Violet returns. Meanwhile, I'll write that note. Are you quite sure you've thought of everything? Yes, my dear. Right. Quite sure. Oh, Lucy, is that hot water bottle for Mrs. Kesney? Yes, Miss Steele. I'll pick it up for you. I'm going to see her now. Very well, Miss Steele. Thank you, and say thank you. Uh, don't go, Lucy. I want you to run an errand for me. Yes, sir. Close the door, will you? I want you to, uh... Take this note over to Mrs. Bradford. Yes, sir. Or oh, is there anything wrong, sir? No. Why? Oh, beg pardon, sir, but I thought as you were going there for Christmas dinner, he must be putting it off. Now, Mrs. Chesney is feeling much brighter. I'm merely delaying luncheon so that she can get up at her leisure. I see, sir. 
Then I'd better see if she wants a hand with her hair. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure Mrs. Chesney can manage her coiffure without your assistance this morning. No doubt Miss Peel will help in any way that is needed. Oh. What do you mean by that? I just said, oh, sir, it's no harm in that, is it? Don't be impertinent. I beg pardon, sir. You don't like Miss Peel, do you? That isn't for me to say, sir. I would make an effort to like her if I were you. She is very kind. But after all, it is Christmas. Yes, sir. I'll try, sir. Thank you, Lucy. Now hurry over to Mrs. Bradford's. Yes, sir. Who could be calling at this hour? I can't imagine, sir. I'll tell them uh, Mrs. Chesney is receiving no one. But you will want to see them, won't you, sir? I don't wish to see anyone. Get rid of them as soon as possible and then run to Mrs. Bradford's. Very well, sir. If you say so, sir. Who is it, I wonder? Why must they come now? Oh, good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Lucy. Well, I'm afraid they, the master's not seeing anyone. Oh, don't be daft, Lucy. Of course they want to see me. William, a Merry Christmas to you. Oh, uh, and to you, Hector. Your maid seemed to think you wouldn't want to see me, but she's probably a wee bit excited over the time of the year. Yeah, probably. All the same, I wasn't expecting to see you this morning. No, you wouldn't normally on Christmas Day, but the Anderson girls next door have contracted the measles, so I thought I'd pop in and see you both on the way. Oh, that was very kind of you. Just a social call. Well, where is she? My wife, you mean? Of course. Who else? Um, she uh, has a slight headache, so I told her to miss church this morning and get some rest. Oh, is that so? But, you know, sleep isn't always the answer to a headache. Maybe she should get some fresh air into her lungs. Oh, I'm afraid uh, she won't stir. I'll away up and wish her a Merry Christmas. I shouldn't do that, Hector. Why not? She, uh, she's asleep at the moment. She can't be asleep in the middle of the morning. A wee chat will do her good. I won't be a minute. Uh, Hector. Yes? Please don't go up just now. Why ever not? Well, uh, as a matter of fact, we had a slight quarrel earlier today. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, it's nothing much. But we were both a little upset, so she has gone to her room to calm down. I understand. Oh, well, as long as it's nothing serious. No, quite trivial. Then I'll be getting along. Ah, oh, good morning, Miss Pew, and a Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Dr. Graham. Well, I must away to the Andersons. Don't worry, William, I can let myself out. Goodbye, I, Hector. I hope you'll be free to enjoy the rest of Christmas, Doctor. Ah, but it's Boxing Day I'm not looking forward to. It's the busiest day of the year for me. God, why did he have to turn up? Now, Elizabeth, you stay here. For heaven's sake, keep away any more callers. I'd better go and get this business over. There is no need, William. What? She is dead. Dead? Good heavens. I'd better go up and see for myself. time you've been. Well? You were right, Elizabeth. She is dead. Oh, William. How did it happen? I don't know. William, what are we going to do? Now, now, calm yourself, my dear. First tell me what happened, and then we can plan our story. Well, I went upstairs with a hot water bottle and knocked on the door. I found her lying in bed, propped up with pillows. She looked dreadful. Her face was so white, and her eyes were hollowed with tears. She was past crying then. I tried to apologize, but the words almost stuck in my throat. Again, she told me to pack my things and leave, and I agreed to do so anything to get out of her presence. I'm sure she did not believe me, but she nodded and turned her head away. I poured two teaspoonfuls of the sleeping draught into the glass of water by her bed and urged her to drink some exactly the way you told me, William, without looking at me. She obeyed. And then an odd expression came into her eyes. I wonder if I shall ever wake again, Miss Peel, she said. I asked her what she meant, but she didn't. 
did not reply. It was then I realized why she looked so strange when I went in. She must have taken some of the medicine herself because by the time she had drunk the mixture I had given her, she was nearly asleep. I became frightened of what I'd done and tried to waken her. I slapped her hard. But she'd gone. Oh, I feel so cold down here. What are we going to do, William? We must send for the doctor, my dear, at once. It is no use. She is dead. But he must certify her death. Why didn't you tell him when he was here? I was afraid. Afraid? I had to see you alone first. I, I was frightened of what to say. That was a bad mistake, Elizabeth. We must see that everything looks as natural as possible. What do you mean? He will think it is either heart failure or suicide. But one thing he won't suspect is murder. He's only gone next door. Go and fetch him. I... I can't do that. It will look better if you do. Tell him you took the hot water bottle to Mrs. Chesney and found her there dead. He will never suspect you of any ulterior motive. You say so, William. I will get you through this business. Never fear. Just trust in me. I do, William. When you're close to me, I feel safe. As I do too, my dear. When you've told the doctor, meet Violet at church and break the sad news. It'll give you a little more time to collect your wits. Hurry, my dear, fetch Dr. Graham. Oh, excuse me, sir. Uh, go at once, Miss Peel. Yes, Mr. Jenny. Oh, I beg your pardon, Miss Peel. I forgot to wish you a Merry Christmas at breakfast. I do hope... I you... can't be long, Mr. Jenny. Well, I did try, sir. But you see how she treats me. Never mind that for the moment, Lucy. You must prepare yourself for a shock. A shock, sir? Yes. While you were delivering that note, Mrs. Chesney... Mm -hmm. This is terrible. Mrs. Chesney passed away suddenly. Passed? Oh. oh, she couldn't have, sir. I saw her at breakfast only a few minutes before I went out. Nevertheless, it is <laughs> true. Her heart, I imagine. Oh, can't believe it, sir. Mrs. Chesney dead. Oh, no, sir. It isn't possible. Miss Peel has gone for Dr. Graham. Oh, dear, dear. Try to pull yourself together, Lucy. Now, when Miss Violet returns, will you take her downstairs out of the way? Oh, yes, sir. And when you have a moment, pull the blinds over all the windows. Yes, sir. We must all try and be brave in front of Miss Violet. A lot of the responsibility will rest with you. And me, sir? Yes. Miss Violet has known you all her life and trusts you implicitly. You must help her all you can. I'll do my best, sir. Oh, poor motherless lamb. Then you must stop crying, if only for her sake. Yes, yes, sir. I'm just upset. Coming so sudden like this. Then you can imagine Miss Peel's feelings on finding my wife. Miss Peel, sir? Yes. She found her already dead when she took the water bottle up. Oh, but, sir, I know... Th I found the front door open, so I walked in. William, this is a terrible business. Miss Peel came to tell me. Are you sure she's gone? Yes, Hector, I'm afraid she has. Will you forgive me if I don't come up with you? I don't think I could bear any more just now. No, of course, I quite understand. Uh, Lucy, will you take the doctor upstairs? Yes. I would like a few minutes by myself. Of course, sir. Oh, doctor, this is a sad day for so. It is indeed. Better pull down the blind. Just coming home. My poor, poor child. I, I wanted to come home to Mama. I, I wanted to help her get better. Violet, my dear. She looked so sad this morning. Almost as, as if she knew. My poor child. Try not to cry like that. Violet, my dear. I think it would be best if you went downstairs to the kitchen for an hour or so. There is so much to be done, and it would be better if you were not here. If, if you, you say so, 
There's a brave girl. Lucy will be here in a second. But couldn't I stand to help you? Please. It will help your father much more if you do as he says, my child. I'm not your child. It was you who made my mother ill. Uh, yes. What was it she said this morning? She couldn't forget something she'd seen. You're imagining things. No, I'm not. You'd upset her. I know you have. I could tell by the way she looked at you. And you couldn't look back. Harlot. <laughs> that will do. You are getting hysterical. <laughs> Excuse me, the doctor would like to speak to you, sir. Come in, Hector. Lucy, would you be so good as to take Miss Violet downstairs? Oh, yes. You and Cook can look after her for a while, can you not? Yes, sir. Come along. Poor we Now, Miss Violet, don't cry, dear. Poor child. She's dreadfully upset as we all are. Hector, won't you sit down? Thanks. I'm deeply sorry about all this, William. It is a terrible shock. But we must be practical, I suppose. I imagine the next step is to send for the undertaker. I'm afraid it's not as simple as that. You see, it wasn't her heart. At least, not directly. Not her heart? What was it, then? I can't commit myself so early, but it looks to me as if she had had an overdose of her medicine. But that is impossible. She was so cautious about the dosage. Oh, I know she could be careless in many ways, but she always carried out your instructions to the letter. Aye. Well, you see, I wonder if I could speak to you alone a minute. Why, yes, certainly, if you think it necessary. Miss Peel, in these last few months, has become a close friend of the family, you know. Just the same. I would rather see you alone. As you wish. Uh, Miss Peel, uh, would you be so good as to withdraw for a few minutes? Mr. Chesney. The doctor wishes a private word with me. No doubt it will all be cleared up shortly. Very well, Mr. Chesney. Well, Mr. Chesney. Well, Hector? What I'm about to say is quite in confidence, you understand? Naturally. The fact is, I'm profoundly uneasy over the whole business. You see, the glass of water beside her bed had the remains of a large proportion of sleeping draught in it. Well, I expect she took some to make her sleep. Ah, but there was more than a single dose there. Are you certain? Not of the exact amount without analysing it, of course, but there must be enough there to have killed her. Hector, that is a terrible thing to say. I'm sorry to have to say it. I was fond of you both. Mrs. Chesney was a kind, sweet woman. She was, indeed. The point is, I had given her a new bottle only two days ago, and now it's empty. It was very strong stuff. I remember her telling me how careful she had to be with it. That's what I can't understand. She didn't seem to be the sort who would take her own life. I should not have thought so. Do you know any reason why she should have done this? I don't, Hector. It is a terrible blow to me. I can only suppose I must have failed her in some way as a husband. You told me you had had a quarrel with your wife just before she went upstairs. Oh, yes, but it was a trivial affair. Nothing that could possibly make her do this dreadful thing. No. Well, women are strange creatures. Perhaps the police will be able to throw some light on the subject. The police? Why, yes, I'm afraid they'll have to be called in now. Is that uh, strictly necessary? Aye, it is, William. Absolutely necessary in the circumstances. This is a terrible business for you. I wish I could do something to help. Oh, you must do your duty, Hector. In the same way that I'm sure the police will. Shall I ring for Lucy to go and fetch them? Aye, that would be best. This is a bad thing for Violet, poor wee soul. Her mother dead is bad enough without the police trampling all over the place. Will they, um, be here for long? It all depends. They will be as unobtrusive as possible. Hmm. Perhaps it would be better if I sent her away for a while. Oh, I shouldn't do that. She will need your love and affection more than ever now. I suppose so, yes. You rang, sir. Oh, yes, Lucy. Uh, how is Miss Violet now? Oh, 
a little restless, sir. But Cook's making her some fudge to try and take her mind off things. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Lucy, I'm afraid there is some doubt as to how Mrs. Chesney died. Hmm? Uh, the doctor thinks we should send for the police. Oh, mercy me. No, no, Lucy, there's nothing for you to be afraid of. If they ask you any questions, just answer them truthfully. Yes, sir, I'll try. Then will you go and fetch them, please? What? Me, sir? Yes, Lucy. The police station is only around the corner. Ask the sergeant on duty if he could send a man along. Very well, sir. And Lucy, don't stay to gossip with anyone. As if I would, sir. This must be kept as private as possible, do you understand? Yes. We don't want the entire street to know what has happened. Oh, no, sir. It's odd, isn't it, that Miss Peel didn't say anything to me when I was here before? Uh, yes, but uh, she explained that to me. It seems she feared that suspicion would be thrown on her. Why should she imagine that? Oh, probably because it was she who first discovered that my wife was dead. Is that a fact? Well, she mustn't harbor such foolish thoughts. William, you're having a bad time of it. I think I'll wait downstairs for the police to come and then we can go up without disturbing you. Uh, will they not want to see me? Aye, they'll want a word afterwards, but try to have a rest before they arrive. Oh, I'm all right. You haven't had time to take all this in yet. The strain will come later. You still have a lot to face. I realize that. So prepare yourself while you can. I am your doctor, you know. Very well, Hector. I will sit here for a few moments, if you insist. Good. I'll away downstairs and wait for them. Well, now I know what I must do. William. Oh, it's you, Elizabeth. I didn't hear you come in. I was waiting at the end of the landing for him to leave. I see. What did he say that was so important? Why did I have to leave the room? I saw Lucy come and go in great agitation. What is it? William, for God's sake, tell me. Quiet, Elizabeth. You want everyone to hear you? It was nothing. Nothing at all. He thinks it was suicide. Oh, thank God. So you have nothing to fear. Oh, William, hold me close. For a moment I was terribly afraid. I told you not to be. If you trust in me, there is nothing to worry about. But you must keep calm. I'll try, William. If only to trust in each other, then all will be well. What's that? I expect it is the police. The police? You never told me you'd send for them. Dr. Graham said it was necessary, my dear. Now, Elizabeth, there's no time to be lost. Where are those letters? Letters? What letters? The letters I wrote to your mother. They're upstairs in my trunk. Fetch them. Why, William? I don't understand. You must bring them to me immediately. Don't you see, if the police suspect you by the remotest chance, they will search your belongings for a motive. They might even do so in any case, to find a reason for her suicide. They wouldn't do that. Indeed, they would. They are far more interested in closing a case as quickly as possible than in considering our feelings. If you're sure... I'm positive. Hurry, my dear, we haven't a moment to lose. Bring them to me before they come in here. But... You trust me, don't you? I'll fetch them at once. Quickly, my dear. Lucy, is that you in the hall? Yes, sir. Uh, come in here a moment. Yes, sir. Was that the police I heard going upstairs? Yes, sir. It was Sergeant Wilde. Do you know him, then? Oh, I've seen him occasionally, sir. It was he who found the wee dog that Mrs. Anderson next door lost. I see. Did he ask you any questions on the way here? Oh, no, sir. No, he hardly said a word to me. Good. I only wanted to warn you that if he does, you must be completely truthful. I always am, sir. So I thought. But when speaking of Miss Peel, you must try not to show your personal animosity towards her. It would be very unfair. Do you understand? Yes, sir. You had better go back to them in case they want anything. I shall be in here when they have finished. Very well, sir. But there is just one thing that... Ah, oh, there you are, Miss Peel. That is all, Lucy. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Miss Peel. Here they are. 
Are you sure you have them all? Quite sure. I always kept them all together in this little box. Good. But why are you burning them? You don't need them any longer. There. The last barrier is cleared between us now, Elizabeth. We are free. You are free. Elizabeth. It's strange. I feel no remorse for what I've done. I sure shouldn't I? I don't know. But now that those letters are burned, I feel closer to than ever before. Naturally. We could not have gone through our lives with anything between us. Now we shall be able to conquer the world together. Once the police are satisfied... They won't find anything. Leave it to me. Miss... I think they're coming. Are you ready for them? With you, I'm ready to face anything. It won't take long. Excuse me, the sergeant, sir, and the doctor. Ah, come in, both of you. William, this is Sergeant Wilde. He would like to ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. Good morning, sir. May I convey my deepest sympathy to you and apologize for intruding on your privacy at such a time? Not at all. I realize that you have to do your work the same as anyone else. Won't you sit down? Uh, no, thank you, mm -hmm. sir. I would rather stand. Just as you wish. Oh, this is Miss Peel, our governess. How do you do? How do you do, Sergeant? Uh, do you wish Lucy to be present? Uh, if you don't mind, sir. There are one or two points I would like to clear up. Of course. Shut the door, will you, Lucy? Yes, sir. And now, uh, Miss Peel, I understand you discovered the uh, Mrs. Chesney. Yes, I did. Could you tell us exactly what happened? There is very little to tell. I took a hot water bottle up to her room. She had a slight headache and was staying in bed for the morning. Had you seen her earlier? Oh, yes. Uh, not at breakfast, though. She had hers upstairs. Was not that unusual, being Christmas Day? I suppose it was, but Mrs. Chesney suffered often from her headaches, as Dr. Graham will tell you, so that although it was disappointing for our little girl, my wife remained in her room. I see, sir. Go on, Miss Peel. Well, I knocked at her door, but there was no answer, so I went in and... Found her dead. It was horrible. Surely you would have thought she was simply asleep. Didn't you try to wake her? Oh, of course. How, how silly of me recollecting the scene has made me feel so upset again. I... There is no need to be nervous if you have nothing to hide. I am hiding nothing, Sergeant. Good. Well, Miss Peel? Well, I shook her, but she didn't open her eyes. She just lay there. I realized she was very cold. Unnaturally cold. And suddenly I knew. I was frightened. I'd never seen a dead body before, so I ran out of the room and downstairs as quickly as possible. Oh, but Miss Peel, you couldn't have... Uh, what do you mean, Lucy? Oh, I beg pardon, sir. I shouldn't have spoken, but I don't understand it. What don't you understand? Well, sir, when the doctor came to see Mr. Chesney, I went upstairs. Lucy, I gave you strict orders to leave straight away with that note to Mrs. Bradford. I know, sir. But I was worried about my mistress, so I went up to have a peep at her. Did you suspect there was anything wrong? Oh, no, sir. I thought she might need me, that's all. Did you think that Miss Peel wouldn't be capable of looking after her? No, sir. Miss Peel has always done her duty as a governess very well. No, it wasn't that. I suppose I just wanted to help, sir. I see. So you went upstairs? Yes, sir. And went in? Uh, no, sir, not exactly. I got as far as the door, then I heard voices, so I went away again. You heard voices? Yes, sir. You couldn't have. Could you identify those voices? Yes, sir. Well? It was Miss Peel and Mrs. Chesney. You are quite sure? Oh, yes, sir. This is ridiculous. You surely would not believe her word against mine. The, the woman has disliked me ever since I came here. She's jealous of me. That isn't true, now, sir. one moment, Miss Peel. I would like to hear all of Lucy's statement first. Well, sir, I only stayed a moment. I didn't hear much, that's true. So what did you hear? Something about Mrs. Chesney telling Miss Peel to leave at once. She tried to calm her down, but well, I didn't wait for any more. Frightened of being discovered, eh, Lucy? That's right, sir. Besides, I had to leave for Mrs. Bradford. Uh, Mrs. Bradford? That's Mrs. Chesney's mother. I see. Miss Peel? Yes, Sergeant? Were you aware that Mrs. Chesney took a sleeping draught occasionally? Yes. 
Did you notice the medicine bottle beside her bed? I think so. Think? You either did or you didn't, Miss Fayle. I noticed it, yes. And the glass of water also beside her bed? Yes, of course, but... But what else... Did you know that it contained approximately half a bottle of sleeping draught? That is impossible. I didn't... Well, Mr. Chesney, how could that be? I don't know, Miss Peel. I don't understand. How could it have got in there? Obviously, somebody poured it in, Miss Peel. I'm sure it wasn't. Yes? Of course, I, I didn't really notice the water glass particularly. Nor the empty medicine bottle beside it? Empty. Empty. Dr. Graham. Yes, Sergeant. It was Miss Peel who called you in, I gather? That is correct. And yet you told me you had visited Mr. Chesney earlier. That is also correct. Did you see Miss Peel then? Only for a few seconds. She had just come downstairs from Mrs. Chesney's room. I presume so. Odd, was it not, that she didn't tell you at once what had happened? Aye, I remarked on it to Mr. Chesney here, but he seemed to think she was afraid of something. Afraid? That was what you said, William, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Perhaps you could uh, elucidate this further for us, sir. It is rather difficult, Sergeant. Uh, Miss Peel was naturally overwrought and hysterical. She seemed to think that because she had a scene with Mrs. Chesney... Then she, she had had an argument. I am afraid so, yes. Even Violet remarked on it. William! She was afraid that as it was she who found Mrs. Chesney dead, she would be suspected of murder. William, how can you say that? It isn't true. I... William, what are you talking about? I am sorry, Miss Peel, but one has to tell the truth. As William! One. Sergeant! Yes, Miss Peel? William, you must help me. My dear Miss Peel, we, that is my wife and I, both tried to help you. But you cannot expect me to shield you now. What? If you have killed my dear wife, I shall do everything in my power to see that you pay for it. William, don't speak like that. Are you not going to help me? Sergeant, I am afraid there are some things that must be told now. My wife and I tried to gloss them over, but that is no longer possible. Go on, sir. This, this woman insinuated herself into our home, and we did our utmost to make her welcome. Lucy here will testify to that. Yes, indeed, sir. But unfortunately, she is the type to take advantage. At first, she proclaimed herself in love with me, but found there was little to be gained by that. Will you? So she deliberately set out to estrange me from my wife. She told the most outrageous lies about my past, saying I had had an affair with her mother and ruined her life. It's true, you did. A fantastic story, entirely untrue. But Mrs. Chesney was a very sensitive person, and this grieved her deeply. She had felt sorry for Miss Peel. But this was too much for her to bear. So she dismissed her. Miss Peel begged us to keep her over this Christmas period. I wish to heaven that we hadn't. I... <laughs> oh, William, this is terrible. I had no idea. Oh, sir. After all the help you'd given her, I never did trust her from the beginning. It would appear that your suspicions were correct, Lucy. Well, Miss Peel, have you anything else to say? No, nothing. Except I... William, you must have emptied the medicine into the glass of water when you went to look at her. And you've burnt the letters. You've thought of everything, haven't you, William? I think you had better come down to the station with me, Miss Peel, to make a signed statement. As you wish. I'm sorry this had to happen, sir. Aye, William, when I sent for him, I never... Oh, it's no fault of yours, Hector. We will be back again later, sir, I'm afraid. I realize that, Sergeant. Violet, my dear, you shouldn't be here, you know. I'm, I'm sorry, Papa, but I felt lonely down there with Cook. Of course, my dear child. Uh, we must go now, sir. Thank you again for all your help. Goodbye, William. If there's anything I can do, you've only to ask me. Are you ready, Miss Peel? Where are you going, Miss Peel? <clears throat> she is leaving us for a while, Violet. Try not to make it too hard for her. Come back soon, Miss Peel, please. I, I wanted to apologize for being so rude to you earlier. I'm sure Mama wasn't really angry with you. It was just suddenness of it. Come along, Miss Peel. William, did you plan this from the beginning? Didn't you mean anything you said to me? Goodbye, Miss Peel. 
Your plan did not succeed after all, did it? No, William. But as you once said, plans have a habit of going wrong. You may find that yours was not infallible either. Miss Peel? Yes, sir. I'm coming. What did she mean, Papa? I don't think Miss Peel realized how much I loved you, my child. Where has she gone? She has, um, some business to attend to. But she has left her little box. What box, my dear? Where she kept all her business papers. See, there it is on the table. How did you know what she kept in there, Violet? She showed me one day. Showed you? Yes, Papa. She was explaining to me how to write a business letter, and she gave me one of hers to copy. A letter? From that box? Yes, Papa. She said it wasn't important. What did it say? It was just a letter from her lawyer, acknowledging a, a packet she'd sent to him to be placed in safekeeping, she said. I wonder what could have been in that packet, don't you? Oh, she told me, Papa. It was some old love letters. She sent them to her lawyer... She kept the envelopes. Wasn't that a funny thing to do? Very funny. Shall I run after her with the box, Papa? No, Violet. It is too late. The box is empty now. was Ruth Dunning as Elizabeth Peel, Hamilton Dice as William Chesney, and Mary O'Farrell as Mrs. Chesney in Sweet Sorrow by Ronald Barnes, with Beryl Calder as Violet Chesney, Duncan McIntyre as Dr. Graham, Molly Rankin as Lucy, and George Hagen as Sergeant Wilde. The production, which was recorded, was by Audrey Cameron.